the, the thing that's so disappointing about our voting process, and maybe it's always been this way, but maybe now it's just such a degree, it's just unavoidable. But so many people go to the ballot box now to vote against people. They're not voting for things that help them. They're voting so somebody won't get something that could help them. And that is a strange and weird mentality to me to have. You brought up student loans. You've seen the arguments all over social media, just like I have, where there are so many hateful people that really are just like, nah, you just got to be in debt. And it's like, what? And right. then these are the same people who seem to forget, yo, if you've ever used a public library, a public park, any of the public services, especially when you were a kid, you have used that you did not directly pay for. So why then do you get so much joy out of seeing other people suffer? And I don't know, and you could give me your insight, is this a political condition that we will ever get over in this country? Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's a racial condition that we struggle to get over in this country. Um, so I'll, I'll answer this two ways. One, what we see often in that situation is people, is white people proactively voting against things that they think will help black people even when empirically you can show that either A, it actually helps more white people, or B, it helps white people disproportionately to black people. Even in those two situations, you'll still see white people voting against policies that help them um, because they think that somebody else is, is, is getting ahead. A perfect example of this is affirmative action. Affirmative action, which is about to be uh, destroyed by the Supreme Court, the arguments were actually on Halloween, White people in Clarence Thomas are going to take away affirmative action, even though empirically affirmative action helps white women more than anybody else. And white women will vote against affirmative action because they feel like some black kid is going to get a spot that should have gone to their kid. And it's just not how it works. And you can show them the stats and they don't care. Right. So that's so one, it's just that racial that that racial lens. I was joking with a friend online. He was like, you know, the choice in this election is one pizza place that shows you Luke, serves you lukewarm pizza and another pizza place that serves you broken glass and cyanide. And people are <laughs> like, oh, I, I don't know what to do, right? And the, the trick that Republicans always do is that even when they're serving their white voters broken glass and cyanide, they're saying, well, you know, we're giving more broken glass and cyanide to black people. So there's only one way you come out ahead because of that pizza place giving the lukewarm pizza to everybody. The reason why I know I'm not just talking out my butt is that we see empirical evidence of this when we look on the global stage. So one of the things that people, liberals especially, love to point out is Scandinavia. Oh, Scandinavia has social services for this, social services for that. And, uh, yeah, Scandinavia is all white. Scandinavia is, 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 a, is a largely homogeneous community. And when you live in a largely homogeneous community where you see yourself in almost everybody that you see – it's a lot easier to have collective policies, apparently, right? I promise you that if Scandinavia was 14% black and 26% Latino and 18%, I guarantee you Scandinavia wouldn't look like that. So we, we, we know that there, you see it a lot of times in, in Europe where we have countries that are, so, that are literally socialists, have you know, great social policies, and then as soon as there are a lot of Arab immigrants or a lot of Muslim immigrants, oh, suddenly those social policies are bad and we got to elect uh, right-wing fascists again. Right? Like the, it happens all over the world, and, it, and what it is is the, the false uh, 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 idea that sharing the wealth diminishes somebody else right it's it's that it's the idea it's the false idea that we live in a zero-sum game and that any benefits that are given to somebody else necessarily hurt um some other population it's not how that's not how economics works that's not how justice works it's, this is not how it works but there are people who really believe that so coming into midterms you know what the narrative was the narrative was that the democrats were about to get white um, and that the red wave was coming. And here we are today, and that did not happen. As one headline I read said, it was more like a pink splash. <laughs> and there were certainly some very noteworthy things that happened. I'm from Michigan, and Michigan took everything. Michigan you know, showed out. They showed out, and it was historic um, midterm turnout, particularly in Detroit, which is obviously the biggest city in Michigan. And uh, you know, they took the House, which they had not had in 40-something years. So now it's complete Democratic control. And so we, we saw these phenomenons, if you want to call it, happen. 
why was the prediction, why didn't the prediction meet reality? Yeah, because mainstream corporate media sucks. I mean, let's just let's <laughs> start with the with the most obvious. I mean, mainstream corporate media and mainstream corporate polling has been wrong for multiple cycles in a row right now, right? Like they don't know what they're doing, they don't know what they're talking about, but we they know who their owners are. And they know what the board wants to hear, and they know what the CEOs want to hear, and so they push relentlessly push right-wing narratives that have no valence on the ground. I swear to God, if I see another poll, like it's it, like they don't it's not just that they don't matter, it's that they're actively trying to push the narrative towards uh, uh, right-wing goals. One, I think, striking graph I saw was the issue of crime, which we have crime in this country. We don't have more crime than other, like, like, you know, the crime is a complicated issue. Fox News, you know, six weeks for the election, start talking about crime, start talking about crime, start talking about crime. And then you saw on this graph that the mentions of crime on CNN and MB MSNBC went up in proportion to how much Fox was talking about it. Fox was the tail wag and the dog on that particular issue. And that's what corporate media does consistently. And so part of the reason why there was this mismatch between expectation and reality is because corporate media is literally trying to feed you the wrong narrative in order to appease Republicans and for the most part, appease their corporate board. So that's one general thing. The second thing that, that just has to be said this is a this is not an American problem. This is a white voter problem. All right. When we look at this, when we look at exit polls, and again, this is not me talking out my bum. This is can, this is actual statistical evidence. We see that white people overwhelmingly vote for Republicans, and everybody else doesn't. Right in this, the current ele electoral poll, uh, exit polls that we're seeing, we see sixty three percent of white men are voting for Republican candidates. 53% of white women voting for Republican candidates and a majority, a over 55% majority of everybody else. Every You break down black men, black women, Latino men, Latino women, everybody else voting against Republican candidates. So the media becomes, I think, very skewed in terms of talking about white voters without putting that qualification on it. And, and, it, and it overwhelms the narrative, right? So, like, if you feel like you're about to get wiped out with white voters, you might be. If you're, you probably are because white people are going to white. But that doesn't mean that you're going to get wiped out in the election if you can bring significant numbers of non-whites to the polls, and if the and if you don't and if the blowout amongst whites is largely concentrated against uh, among white men, if you can be competitive with white women. And you can, basically the, the numbers, and this is true of just about every election, you got to hold the Republican gains among white voters to around 60%, right? Anything over 60, you're in super danger area, right? But if you're a Democrat and you can get 41, 42, 43% of the white vote, you're, you're, you can win. You can win that election, but the media doesn't talk about it that way. Pundits don't think about it that way because they have an extremely white-centric uh, view of things. They'll say, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've seen the stories too, Jamel, where they'll say like, oh, suburban women are breaking towards Republicans this election. No, they ain't. Suburban white women are breaking towards Republicans this election. And that's a big distinction because there are lots of suburban non-white women who are standing against fascism and against racism and against what the Republican Party is offering. Uh.